Hey, it's Mark with Mark's Virtual Real Estate Channel. We're back with another Upland video, and today I'm talking about how I really, really, really messed up on the Thrifty Trader in Dallas, and how I'm doing okay on the Thrifty Trader in Arlington. Um, all right, so Upland is a virtual real estate game where you can buy plots of land, you can build, you can rent, you can flip. There's all kinds of cool stuff you can do. And I'm a real real estate investor as well, so it's been a lot of fun for me to play slash invest in this game. And um, yes, yeah, normally I'm watching, wearing my watch, but my strap literally just fell off <laughs> just a second ago. Um, so Dallas was just released. Over time, Upland releases new cities. They have different contests, different cool things you can do. Now, with a thrifty trader, it's supposed to reward people who buy, sell smartly, who are good traders. The way they set it up, it doesn't really matter how you trade, what profit you make. It's all about your strategy before, during, and after the thrifty trading contest. Now, in Porto, the last city that was released, I got second place in the thrifty trader. That was pretty cool. I got Spark. I got 150,000 Upix and a Block Explorer. That was fun. And so my plan was kind of do something similar in um, Dallas and Arlington, but I completely messed up in Dallas and wasted a whole lot of money. I don't know what I was thinking, um, but Arlington's gone better, so we'll, we'll show you how that's gone. All right, first off, the Thrifty Trader. Um, oh, I don't want to go straight to the, oh, here we go. The Thrifty Trader was really small, so I zoomed in to see it. But here we go, the Thrifty Trader leaderboard. Um, all right. The Thrifty Trader goes from Friday, October 7th at 9 a.m. Pacific Time, which was this morning, until, well, when does it end? October 10th at 9 a.m. Pacific Time. And so basically, these are the four things they talk about. Relative profit score calculates the relative value between the sale price and the 30-day moving average of sales prices in that property's neighborhood. Now, this doesn't mean you're difference between what you buy it for and what you sell it for. That has zero bearing whatsoever on the Thrifty Trader, even though it's called the Thrifty Trader. All this means is you want to sell properties for a lot more money than the average neighborhood price. The relative purchase score calculates the relative value between the purchase price and the 30-day moving average of sales prices in that property's neighborhood. All this means is you want to buy stuff much lower than the 30-day moving average of prices in that neighborhood. Doesn't matter if you make a profit, doesn't matter if you lose money when you sell them, you just wanna buy them less than what the average price is in that neighborhood. Trading volume, the number of properties you buy, trading diversity, the number of people you buy from or sell to. And then all of these are divided into metrics with 30, 30, 20, 20. All right, sorry, I had to take a break. Someone came in to pay rent and my front desk person is off try to get our laundry machine fixed in one of my um, eight plexes. So anyway, <laughs> back to this. Um, they divide these 30% is relative profit, 30% purchase value, 20% trading volume, 20% trading diversity. So it's more important, the, the buys and the sells, besides uh, more important than how many trades you do, who you trade with. Um, blah, blah, blah. Rewards. So you get block explorers if you're in the top 200. And then the people who are in the top um, 100, oh, how do we do this? One um, bracket, I don't know how they, a lot of people get that. So basically if you're within 100 and almost everybody gets some Upix now, right? Really? Yeah. Did they change that? Okay, so I think almost everyone gets some Upix, not very much, but the top tier get a lot of Upix. And then the top tier gets Spark. The top 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 get a little bit of Spark and that moves up and they all get a Block Explorer. Okay, so that's kind of cool. Um, they have the leaderboard, which I'll show you here in a second. They don't like fraud. I don't know how they do that, but they don't like fraud either. So if we go to the leaderboard, which was up here, and again, they made it tiny. So all I did is I just went to my browser and zoomed out to like 100, 200. And you can see it. So I think this is the Dallas one. And you can type in your name here. And I, oh, no data this time. Sometimes it does that if you've done it once. It's kind of annoying. But if you refresh it, it should let you. Oh. Okay. Well, that's exciting. Anyway, I wasn't doing good on that one, so. 
<laughs> I may have... Um, oh, I didn't show up. Well, I don't need to show up there either. Because I'm second, right there. Um, this one I'm not anywhere close to the leaderboard. I don't know. Get out of here. This one I'm second. And I should have um, move up quite a bit here because I just bought a bunch of properties. I'll tell you why and how I did that. And um, this will change though greatly as time goes by. So how do you strategize for doing this? I'll show you exactly how I completely messed up in Dallas. So I had my collection video I released um, yesterday where they announced the collections, I filmed it. And I did some really just dumb stuff. So Dallas, Dallas is okay. But I bought some stuff on the secondary market in these areas, lost a whole lot of money paying a hundred and some thousand for these. I planned to sell them before the collections were announced, but I didn't end up doing that. And so then I ended up getting stuck with those that'll probably sit in my portfolio for a very, very long time because Main Street Market and um, or Main Street District and Elm were not collections. And then I bought some other ones after this, and I'll tell you why here in just a second. And then what I did after the collections, which was kind of dumb too, I don't know why I did this either, is I bought like a $200,000 property on, um, oh no, that's a different strategy I have. I'll tell you about that strategy. That's kind of a weird one. There's the one I bought on Swiss. It, it was a collection. I paid 200 some thousand for it, way too much. And I, I don't know why I bought it right after collections were announced. That's usually the bad strategy. You should wait until a little later when prices calm down. But I did, and I tried to sell it right away. I couldn't sell it. And now you see I have it priced way below what I bought it for. And I'll tell you why I did that. Um, basically, what you want is you want to sell a property for way more than the average neighborhood price. So one way to do that is to buy a property on collections or streets that are collections in neighborhoods that might not have high prices, i.e. right here. Now, I could have bought a property on Main Street or Elm and tried to sell that for a bunch in Main Street District, but the Main Street District was selling for a ton before the collections were announced, so you wouldn't have that big relative value jump. You want to buy in a neighborhood that has much lower prices from the beginning. So you don't want to sell stuff in areas that had high prices to begin with, but you can buy stuff that had high prices to begin with. So um, I think you just said my washer's fixed. Sweet. Anyway, <laughs> so I ended up buying a couple of properties when a thrifty trader started in Main Street and in West End for like 40,000 Upix when these were selling for hundreds of thousands of Upix before. So hopefully that helps my relative value score go up and hopefully prices don't just keep tanking in these areas. Um, I think they'll stay up because they're small. There could be nodes started as kind of a neat area. At least that's what I'm going for. I'm still stuck with these way too expensive properties. And then this one I bought hoping I could resell it either right away or when the thrifty trader challenge started for like 200,000. But prices have just tanked on these two areas. And I'll show you here. I'm at upexcellent.me. If I go to Swiss, and Henderson, that's the two main collection streets. Um, oh, I wish they were a million dollars. 125. Prices are so low now. And there's not even that many. This is for both collections. There's only 65 properties. They're very, um, not that many properties at all for sale, but prices are really dropping. So I, I think I just wasted a whole bunch of money in Dallas and probably, um, I don't care about that, um, probably won't get a lot of it back. So. We'll see that, how that goes. And then on top of all that, I made another massive mistake in Dallas for the thrifty trader. I, I minted all these properties on Levy Street and I've sold a couple and I was so dumb and I left them for sale when the thrifty trader challenge started. So I sold one for 14,000 if I go here, um, 900, which is like a low value, right? I sold low instead of selling high. You wanna sell way high and buy low. I did the opposite. So that's really gonna hurt my relative um, selling score and make it really tough to do well in Dallas. So that was a huge mistake. I did that in Rio too. And um, I completely spaced taking all my properties off the market here. Now, how did it go in Arlington? Arlington went much better. So first off, I had a couple properties in Arlington that I bought yesterday after the collections were announced and I was dumb again and forgot to take those off the market. Luckily nobody bought them. 
took those off the market this morning. And then yesterday, there were two collections in Arlington. And I, I really messed up my collection video too. I've just been having a good um, couple days here because I was saying there weren't, these streets weren't collections. And it's because they were in Arlington, not Dallas, that I couldn't find them. There's two collection streets in Arlington and a collection neighborhood in Arlington. So kind of crazy. But um, there are these streets here. And there was one that popped up for sale for like 130000 yesterday. After the collections were announced, it was big. It had a good markup score. And so I bought that one. And then I waited to put it up for sale until today when the Thrifty Trader Challenge started. And then I sold it. And I pretty much broken even, even with it. Maybe I could have made some money. Maybe I could have held out. But in the Thrifty Trader, I feel like the prices for high value collection properties goes down because everybody's trying to sell them to do well in the Thrifty Trader. And the lower value properties go up because everybody's buying properties trying to do well in the low end. So that was a really good start. And I don't think that counted towards the leaderboard yet. I don't think that property has logged in yet. So that should shoot me way up there when that logs in. And then the other thing I did is I've been buying cheap properties in Arlington as well to get my volume up, to get my diversity score up. And these are all in the, if we go to just Arlington, take these away, 11,000 range. And like, I'll be like, oh, look, I mean, look at the markup on some of these. I bought three this morning that were below mint price in a collection area during the Thrifty Trader. So I was pretty happy about that. And so I've just been buying them here. And I figure it's not the worst thing in the world to buy properties at mint or just below mint in a collection area, even though you can see there's not a lot minted here. Um, and it helps me with the thrifty trader. So I've been doing that. So that's why I have all these properties over here in Arlington to help with the diversity score and volume score and the relative buy score because I'm buying them cheap as I can and then even though most of Arlington is already pretty cheap, right? There's no other like neighborhood to go to. You have no other choice of buying a cheap ones. This is your only choice. And then there will be some more expensive ones selling on those collection streets as well, or bigger properties before. So I don't think anybody else is going to be finding cheaper properties to buy is my point there. So we'll see how that works. So Arlington, good. Dallas, bad. Um, I, I just don't know what I was thinking on some of this stuff in Dallas, but uh, you live and you learn. It could be much worse. I dropped myself down to like 20,000 epics after having, I think, more than a million before this start, this city was released. So hopefully over time, I can get some of that back. Um, a lot of that is stuff I minted on Levy. So I minted it for that price, so I'll be making a decent return. But still, I would, I would love, love to sell some of that and get some more cushion in there as well. So we'll see how all of that, all of that goes. All right. So we'll see how the thrifty trader goes, see how I can do. I'm pretty positive about Arlington, pretty negative about Dallas. I, I might get a block explorer, <laughs> maybe some up small, maybe a little bit of spark. This one, I think I've got a chance to win. So we'll see how that goes. All right. Thanks for watching. Love the support, love the likes, love the shares, keep those coming. And we'll have many more updates coming up soon.